it is focusing on comparing the different perspectives in india and western countries but if you hello everyone welcome to clutus ias this side ca sonali jindal today we will discuss the commerce and accountancy optional paper recently held in 2024 i will majorly focus today on the paper 2 and that too in the part a that includes the ot and ob questions as you know uh, the paper instructions you must have known it this like there are eight questions in the paper and divided into two sections and then you have to attempt in total only 5 questions it means first and fifth question are the compulsory from both parts and thereafter out of the remaining you need to attempt three questions but you have to choose at least one question from each part so from the part a you can choose one question then you have to write the two questions from the part b i know if you know these kinds of the basics already move to the discussion now as i have already told you the first question is compulsory one and in today's paper what are the changes i observed firstly let me tell you like i used to tell in the previous videos also like the you need to focus on the previous year questions and the syllabus yes in this paper also we will see how the same questions have repeated from the previous years or the theme remains the same and the same syllabus topic has been framed in the question itself but there were some questions that were asking the conceptual knowledge as it was asking whether you know the concept or not but still if you have covered the syllabus you have understood the syllabus then you could write the answer like for example the first question how does the sensation different from the perception although in the past upsc has not asked what is sensation but if you know what is perception because it is mentioned in the syllabus like like this only i will show you how it is mentioned in your syllabus thereafter i will also show you the previous year question if on that question previous year exist Uh, as your syllabus says, the perception, its meaning, and its process. And if you have prepared the meaning and the process, then you can obviously write this answer. Like, as P. Robin says, and again, I want to highlight one thing: you need to find out the thinkers that can be quoted in the answer, because otherwise your answer will look look very lame. You have to sport with the thinkers; otherwise, there is no difference between the other person. who has not read the uh, syllabus and uh, if if you have read the syllabus try to basically use any kind of thinker like the aspir robins defines the perception is a process by which individuals organize and interpret their sensory impressions it means your sensation is the first step then how you organize that sensation or the sensory impression by processing organizing or interpreting and to give the meaning it is about a perception so in the exam you can even draw a simple diagram showing the sensation as the first step and the perception at the last and you can also show like the sensation can be same to all but the perception will depend on the person's personality its uh, qualities and it will depend on the internal and external surroundings with which the uh, perception will be impacted and the sensation it obviously means sensory receptors are specialized neurons that respond to the specific type of the stimuli difference while our sensory receptors are constantly collecting the information but how we interpret it will depend on our personality and how we are interacting with the surroundings so perception refers to the way sensory information is organized interpreted and the consciously experienced it means if you have prepared what is the meaning of the perception and if you have prepared what is the process of the perception then definitely you can write the answer like uh, this question is asking about the what is the difference between them firstly you can uh, define in one two lines uh, each of them then you can mention like how these are different from each other like you can make even a chart in this to show there is a impact on the 
of the personality on the perception even the perception can be different for the different person but the sensation remains the same this way you can drive out the some of the points there to write in the difference and even you can write some of the similarity also like the sensation and the perception are the similar in this way because it uh, both depend on the uh, situation or the sensory impressions to that person and uh, by drawing the diagram that the sensation is the first step and the perception this way you can basically go with this answer i again say i agree this has not appeared in the previous years but you have if you have sub, uh, covered the syllabus and you have understood the syllabus then definitely you can write your answer then next question explain major differences between transactional and transformational leadership so in the syllabus it is mentioned leadership theories and the styles same question has been asked already in 2013 you can see itself it was differentiate the key characteristics of the transactional leadership and the transformational leadership in 2021 they have also asked the transformational leadership i have always told you try to cover the previous years from 2013 now with till the 2024 same questions will definitely appear like if you have prepared your notes by seeing the previous years and previous years should become a syllabus for you now and if you have already made the notes then obviously you will say one to two minutes to write the answer now if you understand the concept like the transformational is the one that leadership is basically lead by gaining the trust and respect of the team but the transactional basically work on the coercion method by giving using the carrot and stick method through this he wants to lead or you can say uh, is a actual leader transformational leader is actual leader but transactional leader is actually acting as a boss and you can see this diagram also like the poor leaders use the coercive power and uh, transformational leaderships are more visionary and they are more futuristic and in this also i would Uh, like recommend you to prepare the thinker as well because it has already asked in the previous years you need to prepare the specific thinker james we downtown to write about the transformational leadership as he introduced this concept but still if you don't know in the exam you can use the definition if you have prepared of any of the thinker like aspirobins any of the thinker you have prepared already at least introduce your answer with the thinker's definition always so in this question also start with what is leadership uh, define it then after you Uh, otherwise you can also start with by defining the transactional and the transformational leadership in the two lines as a introduction then you can you should make a chart to show the differences and you can show with the diagram that uh, basically transformational leadership is going beyond the expected outcomes because it adds the idealized influence inspirational motivation intellectual stimulation and the individualized consideration as i have told you it has been asked in the previous years it means the specific content should be prepared in advance and now obviously if you know this basic meaning that transformational is basically empowering and acting as a leader who is gaining the trust of the team then you can write the basically differences also i want to give you one template like how to think in the exam of the paper 2 you can get the points in the chapter wise or the basically subject wise like for example think about the personality how how the personality will be differed in the transactional leadership and the transformational leadership then you can write the perception the perceptual uh, perceptual distortions will not be there in the basically transformational leader or you can say he will not be using the stereotypes or then you can write about the motivation how the transformation leadership is going to motivate by using the mbo management by objective or by participative uh, goal setting but he will use the carrot and stick approach that is a transactional leadership then you can write about the leadership chapter boss versus leader again then you can write about the conflict management and the change management who would be doing it better obviously the transformational leadership then you can write about the transactional analysis like these are the chapters of the ot and then this is a chapter in the organizational behavior you can write you make a use of the jury window 
it has been ours in 2018 because it means the basically transformational leadership will have uh, this uh, coordinate in the zohri window that is i am okay and you are okay in through this question i want to just give you how to make a use of thinkers even if they are not asked how to draw up the points for the question by thinking the chapter wise and by thinking about the subject wise this way you can drive out multiple points in the questions where even you have not prepared the content in advance like organizational structure you can write the uh, transformational leadership will always focus on the decentralization but it will focus on the centralization you can also mention about the informal and the formal organizations the performance evaluation in the hrm subject you can write the performance evaluation in the basically transformational leadership it will be better it will use the modern tools to uh, evaluate and it will be more participative so you can also make the use of the new classical and the classical thinkers in the questions we will discuss further what is the difference there now the third question why do we need to coordinate the formal and informal organization now this the question relates to the syllabus coordinating formal and informal organization directly from the syllabus it is mentioned coordinating formal and informal organization now previous year question the same question informal organization is detrimental to the interest of the formal organization as it is having a detrimental to the formal organization it means we need to manage it therefore it is a evil to be nipped in the bud itself comment in this statement explain how the managers should handle the informal organization if you have prepared the syllabus topic and if you have prepared the previous year question the it means the same question is there and in this question you need to write why do we need it means they are focusing what challenges in formal organization creates that is why we need to coordinate and you need to mention actually we cannot avoid the informal organization and we generally prepare the definitions but you need to prepare some of the quotes of the thinkers i have already told you in the strategy video like how some of the quotes can be used directly in the answers same keith devis has mentioned that the management has not created the informal organization so it cannot either uh, destroy it so it's better to use it that's why we need to integrate the informal organization with the formal organization now in this question you can also write in brief like what if you understand the difference between formal and informal organization by drawing the simple diagram like in the informal organization there is no basically fixed hierarchy rather there is a there could be relation between any of the uh, sectors so next question what are the limitations of the matrix organization and this is mentioned in your syllabus types of organization structure matrix structure so it is asked from the syllabus and their same question 2014 it was asked problems in the matrix organizational structure and even 2022 they have asked explain how matrix structure breaks the unity of command concept it means 2022 question is giving the one point to your answer that it breaks the unity of command now uh, as the matrix organization should be clear to you if you understand the concept you can even write the limitations and the positives there itself like here the basically person is also under the functional head and also under the project head this is the basic meaning it means the every person is under the basically functional head and it's also under the project head what will happen with this basically the both will give the command it means the unity of command principle that the fuel has given it has been not followed in the matrix structure you have to give this and what will happen again try to interlink with the other concept so because with this the leadership conflicts will be created with the between the functional hand and the project head and there will be coordinational problems and maybe this person will not be will be confused and to which order it should follow so this way you can write it can lead to the goal displacement unity of command this like this 
like I have mentioned in the bracket, you need to make a use of the thinkers this way. Just find out the opportunity wherever you can use uh, the thinkers. Just try to mention that conflicts will be there. It is a costly affair. It means it will not be suitable for the small organization, and it can lead to delay in the decision making. Now, next question. Uh, that is the E part. Again, this is a, a example of that question which has not been asked in the previous years. But if you understand the concept and if you have covered the syllabus well, then definitely you can write an answer. And moreover, you cannot cannot avoid this part uh, question uh, because it belongs to question one. That is compulsory to write. How does the socialization helps in maintaining the organizational culture? Now the syllabus is. Managing organizational culture. Here, the focus is on the socialization. How the socialization can help in maintaining the organizational culture? Can't you relate it to the induction or orientation that is mentioned in the HRM syllabus? Like why these are being done by the any organization to introduce to a new employee to the new organization because it takes time for anyone to adjust that is why the socialization is needed and why it is being done so that the same culture can be followed later on this is a socialization so if you will uh, if you have covered the hrm topics induction and orientation then obviously and if you have covered the organizational culture then also you can write the answer like how the organizational culture is being developed like for example firstly the founder values and preferences affects and the industry demands thereafter basically new employee whenever it is on board we have to socialize him and there should be effective leadership or the transformational leadership there and there should be reward system so that finally our organizational culture will be created and these are the steps like these are the first we are creating the culture after that to maintain we need to hire those employees we that could imbibe with the culture and if there are some cultural differences we need to socialize that person with the new culture then only we can be able to maintain the culture in any organization so it means if you have covered the hrm topic and the uh, ob topic then definitely you can write this answer then question number 2 part a how have the organization have been defined compare the different perspectives of organization in india and the western countries this is also a question i that has not been asked in the previous years but if you have understood the syllabus if you have covered the theories well then definitely you can write this answer very in a very well manner like for example the concept is nature and concept of the organization is, is in the syllabus it means the how the organization has been defined there are multiple definitions you will prepare while preparing the organizational theory secondly the in the previous years they have already asked and mentioned the definitions of some thinkers as a question itself so and thereafter your syllabus also mention evolution of the organizational theory classical new classical and the system approach now in this question when you will read it it is focusing on comparing the different perspectives in india and western countries but if you will start comparing indian and western countries thinkers then you will not be able to get the content to write here rather compare the different perspectives of the organizations considering these are applicable to both india and western countries so how you can compare like for example the classical thinkers and this is actually a thruck, uh, crux of the organizational theory if you understand this you can write every question of the organizational theory and even you can make a use of these thinkers in other hrm and ir so what is classical theory says it says we need to focus on the rationality it means there is only one way of doing thing right and they always focus on the production and what are the thinkers there taylor and fuel it means they consider the labor or the human in the organization as a factor of production rather than as a human but then new classical thinker says the basically the labor working there is a actually a human that is a social animal we need to treat uh, basically treat him as a 
human only that's why if we can't treat him only as a factor of the production so what are the thinkers there elton mio chester bernard and after the modern theory comes that also added the element of the environment and there is also system theory that the all systems are interrelated and it is impacted by the environment also that introduced with the open uh, organization and there is a burns and stucker that basically talks about the environment like for example it says if there is a stable environment then we could have mechanistic cult structure or you can say we can have a centralization but if it is a there is a dynamic environment that is a changing environment then we need to have organic structure or you can say we need to have a decentralization this way you can compare different perspectives of the organizations by comparing the different thinkers but after that you need to write about the indian and the western countries also you can write about how the organizational theory has Uh, evolved in india for example in the evolution of the has started day back to civilization has developed like for example in the ivc there was a harappan and mohenjodaro and if we see the civilization there we can see they had a good management skills thereafter we have some examples in the ramayana and the gita where basically uh, in the gita we know the how the uh, basically krishna is guiding the arjun for the war it means it has some guiding and the management principles thereafter the kotalyas arth shastra by the chanakya this is also good example where the chandragupta maurya won the war with the guidance of the arth shastra thereafter you can write in india modern growth has started evolved with the globalization and the establishment of the mncs it means the western theories are now being applicable to the india for example the henry fuel management of scientific management as given by the taylor management by objective management by exception and adopted by the organization you can also write some of the differences as well like uh, in india there are some cultural differences so we need to develop our own theory by uh, making a research in india for example because we whenever we are looking at the western theories they are all have been made after the surveys there itself maybe they will not be applicable to india but now you need to understand like the neo classical thinker says some of the theories like uh, hertzberg theory of the motivation that talks about the sanitation factors and it says uh, it is no more applicable to the white collar jobs but in india if we see there are more blue collar jobs so still the hertzberg theory the uh, satisfactors and the dissatisfactors that is a sanitation factor still applicable to india because we have a blue collar jobs it means although some of the research needs to be made here uh, because of the cultural differences this way you can conclude your answer thereafter the second question part b it talks about the five uh, big five personality traits which one seems to have the biggest impact on the performance how would the knowledge of this these help the manager in his job so this uh, question relates to the personality is it's mentioned in your syllabus theories and determinants and if you have covered this chapter it is always covered in every uh, basically content you will find for the organizational theory it talks about the basically five personality and it it is a ocean and you can see the openness like how much person is open to new things how much he will be creative this way we can hire a person thereafter how much conscientiousness it means how much he is organized then extra version it means he whatever basically how much he is open to meeting a new people so you must have heard of the word extrovert then the agreeableness it means it shows a lot of interest in other people you can say they are the people who actually care about the other person they will create more less conflicts in the organization then uh, there is a neuroticism it means these pe people are having feeling more anxious the times so these are the criteria we need to see which of the basically personality trait is having a high level in the 
एम्प्लॉय और विच ऑफ द वन इज हैविंग द लो लेवल एंड फॉर द डिफरेंट जॉब्स डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ पर्सनैलिटी इज रिक्वायर्ड दिस थ्योरी डज नॉट से दिस टाइप ऑफ द पर्सनैलिटी इज राइट और रॉन्ग इट विल डिपेंड ऑन द रिक्वायरमेंट और यू कैन से जॉब स्पेसिफिकेशन दैट ऑन दैट इट विल डिपेंड नेचर ऑफ पर्सन टू बी हायर्ड देर आफ्टर द एक्सप्लेन द फेजिज ऑफ द डिवेलपिंग क्वालिटी सर्कल्स it is directly mentioned in your syllabus quality circles meaning and their importance and the same question was asked in 2021 or explain the objectives phases involved in establishing the quality circle system and even if you understand what is quality circle then obviously you can write the steps also if you have covered the basically any uh, concept now this was the first time when it was appeared in 2021 so next time some different question could come in your exam but you need to understand if you know the topic try to drive the simple steps obviously if you understand it then you can make the simple steps and it can only develop after lot of answer writing so we need to firstly you need to present like which of the problems to be solved then we need to make a organization then the training is needed problem identification thereafter problem analysis then thereafter solution you can use different phases also to write the quality circles phases but if you understand the meaning of the quality circles then you can you uh, write it now in this question also uh, you might write the definition of one thinker of the quality circle and also make the use of the macgregor i have already told you in the strategy video like here you can use the quote of the macgregor that says the creativity and ingenuity is not narrowly distributed but widely distributed it means as the creativity is the widely distributed we need to make the use of the other person's ideas also and the quality circles gives one way to use the idea of others now further question number 3 a it talks about the major criticism leveled against the hertzberg's two factor theory of the motivation explain its contribution for the better understanding of the motivation at the workplace syllabus same motivation concepts theories and in this obviously you will cover the hertzberg and the maslow theories pyq 2018 same question was asked it says the major contributions of the hertzberg theory of the motivation do you think it makes the contribution uh, to the better understanding of the motivation same question contribution for the better understanding of the same lines from the 2018 comment and give arguments it means if you have prepared 2018 there you must prepare the contribution of the hertzberg that is positive side and you will also prepare the negative side of it because it question talks about the comment it means the same question from 2018 now this is the theory it talks about it has given only two factors uh, in the theory that says if the poor hygienic factors hygiene is not present then that person if it is present then that person will not be not dissatisfied if this is not present then it will be dissatisfied and the other one he has given the motivation theory that says if the motivational factors are present then basically this person will be happy but uh if this is not present it means it will be satisfied at least it means there is a difference between the job satisfaction and the job dissatisfaction if the motivational factors are not present it means it he is not dissatisfied and it is present then the job satisfaction but if the hygiene factors are not present that this person will not be dissatisfied and this way you can define if you understand the it but the criticism it has not included the other needs that is given by the maslow it is not applicable to the white collar jobs i have already explained it there are some cultural and the industry variations there are situational variables that have been missed by it now while writing the criticism of any theory try to locate like for example the hertzberg theory belongs to the neo classical theory it means it has with the element of the situation and the environment that is being given by the modern theories uh, and there has been a limited research i have already told you it has been the all kind of research has been made in the western countries and the 
limited area thereafter the third b part different approaches for designing the organizational culture process involved in it now this question is also new it has not been asked in the previous years but if you understand the organizational theories then you can write this answer very well and if you have covered the organizational structures different types of structures this question uh, basically it is included in your syllabus designing organizational structures it is just asking about the process now only i have told you if you understand the concept they can ask the uh, process of it and and you can definitely draw the uh, through the meanings and if you have this is mentioned in your syllabus designing organizational structure now how to use the thinkers to write the approaches for designing for example the classical thinkers it says focus on the production specialization it means you can write the functional structure could be the answer line and staff function or you can say mechanistic structure thereafter new classical thinkers they it says the focus on human it means the decentralization or the informal uh, informal organization could be the answer the system approach say the focus on systems it means the matrix organization can be created the modern theory say is the focus on environment then the virtual organization network organization hybrid structure can be created and these kind of network structure and the virtual organization has already been asked in the previous years the short note was asked on it it means through the understanding of the thinkers you can write how the different approaches for designing the organizational structure and uh, maybe you might find some kind of other approach for the organization structure but nobody can negate this answer because you have used the thinkers to write the which kind of structure can be created with it and you have used the type of the structure that has been mentioned in your syllabus so this way you can drive your new answers but if this can only possible if you understand the meaning of the different organizational theories thereafter the process you can obviously drive the reviewing the plans then determining the work activities then classify and group the necessary work activities assigning the activities designing a hierarchy of relationship these are the general process you can write any or any type of the points if you understand what is structure because for the structure obviously we need to first see what are the objectives that to be taken and what are the steps that needs to uh, required for that we will see what kind of person is required this way we will make up the team then we can decide the structure then the question third part c that talks about the organizational transition from the organizational change and renewal this is also a new question this has not been asked in the previous years but the question the in the syllabus it is mentioned management of change now for the future you have to prepare what is transition and change i i can briefly explain actually the change is situational but the transition is more psychological it it is talks about the human element it starts with how we take up the people while implementing the change the process of transition management says implementation of the change through the systematic planning organizing and implementation of change to reach the desirable future state without affecting the continuity of business during the process of change the process of transition management begins much before the actual change occurs it means the transition is a bigger then the change it starts from way before because uh, for implementing the change you have to make um, make aware people and you have to take them along there otherwise it can lead to conflicts so it is being given by the bukanan uh, mac talman i understand this uh, thinker cannot be quoted till because we don't prepare as such but if you understand you can write some kind of different answer and anyways in the paper you will get a option but for the future you need to prepare what is transition management so these are the layers there is a trigger layer vision layer conversion layer and the maintenance renewal layer is the last one so need we need to first see the opportunities then only the transition will decide and obviously these are being taken care by the top management the vision layer defining the future what we want to achieve by looking at the opportunities then the persuading and the recruit disciplines thereafter we want to sustain and there are you can also use the make the use of the kurt levin that we prepare in the change management as the as a thinker 
So uh, we have discussed three questions. In the next video, we will continue with the fourth question. And after the fourth question, although this is in the part A, this is also in uh, from the previous years. You can uh, quickly see power structure in the politics 2014 question reasons contributing to the political behavior same questions in, in the 2024 thereafter there are the reasons obviously you can prepare and uh, in this also you need to make a use of the small thinkers thereafter need for the integrating individual and the organizational goals same question in 2019 need for integrating individual and the organizational goals the topic is goal congruency it means if you have prepared the syllabus it talks about the organizational goals and organizational effectiveness it has interlinked the organizational goal with the organizational effectiveness and organizational effectiveness is very general term if you have prepared the 2019 question you can obviously write it thereafter last question of the day distinguish between delegation of authority and decentralization again this is the question has not been asked similar way in the previous years but it is mentioned in your syllabus designing organizational structure authority and control thereafter in your syllabus it is mentioned centralization and decentralization process you can relate it to the previous year that is accountability and responsibility because in the delegation you can delegate the responsibility you can delegate the authority but you cannot delegate the accountability it means if you have prepared that answer you can take the screenshot it is very general terms these are basically decentralization is uh, moving away from the central authority but the uh, delegation is the first step and here you just delegate the some kind of assignment of the tasks so delegation only authority and responsibility but the in decentralization we also delegate the accountability there will be more liberty in the decentralization in delegation you are just creating the superior subordinate relationship but in this you are creating a semi autonomous units delegation of authority is must for every organization but decentralization will depend on the vision of the top management so i am ending the discussion we have discussed the part a of the paper 2 and uh, this includes the ot and ob try to watch it again so that you can understand the significance of the previous years and uh, secondly the syllabus and most important the understanding of the organizational theories thank you all of you